God, we pray that may you anoint each everyone to understand everything that we are going to, to do to, tonight, Lord God. Yes, yes. And Lord, we pray also that we lift up also our praise and worship. Yes. We lift up your name on high to yes. glorify your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Yes, and Lord, as we sing praises to you, we offer that to you, O oh God. Mm. And Lord, we lift up also our our sister Roselle as a giving her life testimony, Lord. Amen. Anoint her, O oh God, and yes. guide her, O oh Lord. And as uh, we lift up also our brother David, yes, as he's going to give the word of God. May you anoint him, O oh God. Yes. Anoint yes. him to, to deliver yes. your word of uh, hearing. Amen. And Lord, yes. let it be you that will be seen in him, O oh God. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. We thank you, Lord, for yes. what you have done in our life. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify your name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are ready to sing our praise and worship, and uh, now we're going to call our praise and worship, which we need. Thank you. Sister Eliana, Sister Eliana, Sister Eliana, Sister Eliana, Sister Eliana, Sister Eliana, Thank you, Lord, for today that you have given us again for the praise and worship, and uh, we be united with you tonight. Amen. You know the the dreams that I have that you have given to me, and now today is the first time I'm gonna do praise and worship. Amen. 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 
now we call her now uh, Mrs. Rosel Rendon to give her life testimony. Welcome. Okay, 
And then when I, I saw this guy, I was like, and then he gave the point. I said, what is that? And then, oh, thank you, thank you, my dad says. Right away, I have the password, 10, 10 years multiple entry, you know. But, you know, when we went to America, I already went to America how many times after that. But one day, I lost my passport when we were coming to LA. So I was really, really, you know, of course, I was really like, why did I lose my passport? How am I going to go back? And then my dad says, and you know what? You just stay here in America and then we'll, we'll take good care of that. You know, you just go and, and do some stuff that you need to make things clear. So anyway, to make the, short, the story short, I was not able to go back to the Philippines because what happened with my passport. I was really scared because I said, if I'm going back, I cannot come back here and I get into like America, you know? <laughs> of course, and then, to tell you the truth, when I came to America, you know, what my weapon really is, when I told my dad, I'm gonna stay, you know, I'm gonna stay, and my dad says, you're gonna stay where? In San Francisco, because that's where my family is. I said, no, in LA. In LA, but you don't have anybody there. We don't have anybody there in LA. I said, dad, I just want to be in LA, I just want to be. And then you see, my dad always give me that trust. He always give me that opportunity. And I, okay, I, I will trust you, just don't forget to pray. So I was alone for how many years here? But you see, you know what, I was really, really very blessed because even though I was, I don't have the relationship with God, but since I have that foundation with Him, I always sit with, I go to church every Sunday. And I'm not driving, and I'm walking like one hour from where I live to the church every Sunday. And then that place that I live, these people that, you know, they always do weekends, they always do playing mahjong and hearts. And then when they see me go down in the morning, they were watching, because they see me like a baby. Oh, where are you going, baby? And then I was just newly, you know, newly dressed up, and you know, I just take a shower. I said, I'm going to church. You're going to church for what? Because, come on, you sit down here, you eat breakfast with us. I said, no, I'm going to church, I'll be back. They, they call me because I look like really a baby. You know, like, you know, just, just take a shower, and then get you ready to go. So they were just teasing me, these old people. But anyway, I still do it. With all my, my, my trust with God, I just really do it. So in, so when I was having this kind of, of you know, this kind of um, situation in America, I really thank God as what I was telling you, my, 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 my preaching, that I really trust Him. He really didn't let me, He didn't really, you know, just let me do by myself. He was really with me all, all the time. And you know what, to tell you the truth, I don't have anybody here, but I found somebody that who gave me a house where I stay. And they provide me a bed, and they provide me everything. So that is my testimony. And then after that, I was praying to God to And you know what, to tell you the truth, from my experience with the Lord, every time I asked Him, He always answered. So when I was asking Him, you know what, I wish I have somebody with me that is also godly, like, you know, godly person, Lord, because, you know, I want to know him better. You know, and then suddenly I met this guy. Oh. <laughs> this guy right here. You know? And you know what? With, with him, with him, you know what? That was how many years ago. He is a very good looking guy. But yes. you know what? I don't know. No, 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 no. You know what? Last things. God knows. God knows. I don't get attention with the physical appearance. That's that's me. That's my personality. You know, when this guy came, everybody was like watching, hey, who is that guy? But anyway, you know, he, he asked me to go out with him, but I'm not really focused on him, you know? And he brought me to first day we went to the we call this in Malibu, in, in Manhattan, sorry I forgot, Manhattan, along the ocean we were walking. But you know what? He just interviewing me, you know, my family and he said, I don't know. <laughs> Because that's how he said. He said, "My friend, 
But that's how Filipino are. But anyway, the second date that he brought me is in Angelus Temple. Amen. That really gets my attention. I wow, I turned my head on him. I said, oh. And then I just said, oh my God. You know what? It's not the appearance. I'm telling you, it's not the appearance. But when he brought me to church, because I was really asking the Lord, bring me somebody that will get to that, you know, give me the connection with you. And that's how I connected with the Lord, through Angelus, and then we met there, Tita Divina, Tita, Tita Alma, and Tito Mark. That's how I started my Christianity in Angelus Temple. And then that's also started our story. And that's a little bit of just the introduction. It's just an introduction. testimony. Because as what I was saying, whatever I pray, he always, he always answered. I just really don't know. I say, everybody is really special. But you know what? Everybody is asking. Sometimes some of us will say, well, how come I am asking him? He doesn't give it to me. Because you have to ask it from your heart. Because God knows. God knows if I will give you, God knows what will this, you know, make with you. Are you going to be a better person or a good person? That's what I was telling you. When I asked him to give me the opportunity to come here, I told him, Lord, if you will put me there, make me a good person. When you know what? When that person did this to me, right there and there in my mind, wow, I'm going to be a good person. I was really excited. So this is the journey of my life right now. But I'm just telling you, it's just a quiet one. I have a lot of things to say. But anyway, thank you so much.
seen a Kung Fu Panda animation movie. It's really bad. Great. Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. Of course, me. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we you know the story. It's about a panda. You know, that wants to be part of a group, a martial art group that's well known, that's famous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But within this group, you know, they're they're practicing by their mentor, their leader, their teacher, and uh, because they're they, they want to be on the top, they want to mm -hmm. be the chosen one, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the panda, you know, as we remember, we call the movie. He has these visions and dreams, and he's fantasizing about himself being part of a fantastic four. That's what they're called, right? And uh, so, by accident, you know, there's a, there's a big celebration where they're going to pick the chosen one because there's the enemy that's coming. And they're going to pick that one that's going to battle against that enemy. Kind of, now, the panda tries to get in. As we recall, no, he can't get in, but by, by accident, by fireworks, he jumps over the wall, lands there, and as the, the, the wise man is uh, ready to pick the chosen one, he dances right in front of him, and he says, you're it. And he's like, what's going on? You know, he didn't know what was going on, but he was the one chosen. <coughs> he wasn't ready, but he was foretold, you are the chosen one. If we go to Romans, don't open your Bibles, I got it all here on my notes. Romans 8, 29, 30, it says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That's a big wow. To be conformed to the image of his son. In other words, to be like Jesus. To reflect. If we look into a mirror, we can see our image. Okay, now we have to reflect the image of Jesus Christ. To have the mind of Jesus Christ. Uh, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he, he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Okay. Um, the title of my message here is the grad, grad, the gradation of God's gift. And we all know what God's gift is: it's salvation. It is a gift given. We did not earn it. We did not deserve it. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. But gradation. Yeah, I don't know if you know what that word means, but it's a step or a place in an order of scale, in advance by regular degrees, a gradual passing from one tint, if we look at, a, let's say we look at this wall, we see this shade, gradation means that it starts light, starts getting darker, and gets real dark. Uh, the act of process, process of grading. So gradation, there's a gradation in the gift of God as he gave us. Now before we, can, uh, we go, uh, to get a better understanding of his, uh, the, his gift and the gradation of it, we have to always go back. I, I always kind of like to go back, not just focus on the, the future. We have to focus on the present and the future, but there's also the beginning. And our beginning, if we go to point one, man's condition without God's gift. It's obvious we know where we came from, right? We knew where we were at, but just as a reminder, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, it says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you formerly walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Verse 1, it says, We were dead in our trespasses and sin. That was our condition. Before we came to Christ, that was our condition. Verse number two, sons of disobedience. Nothing positive, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like everything to the left. And um, verse three, children of wrath. Mm -hmm. Wrath from God. Mm -hmm. Coming down. Yeah. That day will come to all those that are disobedient mm -hmm. on that great judgment day. Mm -hmm. So that was our condition. That was... Let's say the foundation. That's where we started. That's where we were. We were condemned, uh, separated from God. We were unrighteous. Romans 3, 10, 11, 
as it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands, there is none who seeks for God. That was our condition. Without God's gift. Okay, point number one. Point number two. Man, now, now it's man with God's gift. His gift. We are forgiven. There's a, I got four points to this. Forgiven. I'm just going to go through them real quick. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is God's gift. We did not deserve it. Remember where we were. And God looked down and gave His grace. Amen. Two, dead to sin. Romans 6, 2. And then 5, 3, 11. May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? For if we have become united with him, Jesus, or the Father, in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him, in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he who has died is free from sin. We have to understand when we read the scripture and meditate. Not just go through it, not just memorize it, but really sit down and say, like, you know, get the taste of it. Make it real. See, see, that's why I wanted to go to the foundation, because our condition, now we get this gift, this gift, it all comes from God, and He's saying, This is what I give unto you. You were dead, now I make you alive. Now I have forgiven you. Now you are dead to sin. You no longer belong to sin. On the 8 it says, Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with them. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Because Christ only died once. He doesn't have to die again. He said, It is finished, it is done. Death no longer is a master over him. For death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Three, we are righteous. He gave us righteousness. That's an amazing thing because righteousness means that we are in right standing. We are without fault. If they look at our record, it is clean. No condemnation, but only, but not only that, but now we have Christ in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So remember, from death, from sin, from wrath, now we have this gift where Jesus Christ, where the Holy Spirit abides in us. That's God's gift. And we need to jump for joy and say, thank you, Lord, because this is better than the lot of this is eternal life. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, four. Four. Children of God. We are considered children of God. Galatians 3, 26, 27. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. And He is our righteousness. We clothe ourselves with Christ and therefore we are righteous. The Father looks at, to, looks at us and we are considered righteous. So we are forgiven, we are dead to sin, we are righteous, and we are children of God. That's God's gift. Remember Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda? He was the chosen one. He could not accept it. He was like, hey, I'm fat. I try to fight. Nothing works out. How can you have faith in me? It's not going to happen. You know, you know what, brothers and sisters? We face that. Because we have all these promises. And God is saying, 
this is who you are. And you say, Amen, thank you, Father. But we don't act on it. You know? So I'm hoping that, you know, after we, we hear the message, we were meditating, consider it, and say, like, wow, these are all gifts. It's like a bank account. You know? Maybe you don't have any money on your in your wallet. But maybe you have this inheritance where you're a millionaire. Yeah. And it's there. But you just don't know about it. But finally, you know, you get the big news that, hey, you're a billionaire. They left you all this money. And, and it's there. They're saying, go and grab it. But we don't go and grab it. You know, he's saying, look, it's there. It's under your name. It's yours. Just go. Grab it. It's yours. Believe in it. But we're trapped. God is saying, this is who you are, but you're not living it out because you're not having faith, you're not having hold on it, you're not walking on it, you're not trusting on it. So, children of God. Now, point number three, man's responsibility with God's gift. So we have the condition we were at, now we have God's gift, and then we have a responsibility. That's the side we don't like. We only want, Lord, bless me. Lord, no, I don't want to hurt anybody. But that's my prayers. Uh, you know how we normally see movies, uh, you know, with America fighting with other countries, and then the, the president's involved, and he does his speech. And even today, we have the president, and at the end of the speech, he says, May God bless America. And we just want to put a stamp and say, God is going to bless America. But we don't want the responsibility. We just want the giving. Lord, bless me. Answer my prayers. Make my life go well. Mm -hmm. Avoid any problems. But see, we have a responsibility. God said, this is who you are. You are my son. You are righteous. You are dead to sin. You are forgiven. But we don't want to accept it. But we want... The blessings. But those are the blessings. But we want to see prosperity, mm -hmm. right? Here on earth. You know, and obviously that prosperity, as Pastor Hector says, it's spiritual. Yes, mm -hmm. the Lord is going to take care of everything that we need. You know, but it's mainly it's spiritual. So now we have a responsibility. Now we have to act as out. Now we have to walk in it. So one of the greatest battles that we have is accepting the forgiveness. God. Okay. Romans 8, 33-34 says, Who will bring a charge against God's elect? Who is the one who justifies? Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather who has raised who has raised and it says, who is at the right hand of God who also intercedes for us. This is God. He's up there. He's saying, these are my children, and I'm interceding for them. So we need to accept forgiveness. We need to accept, because, you know, that's the greatest battle that we have, because we always put ourselves down, and we say, I'm a sinner. Yes, we are sinners, but we're saved by grace. And we, if we confess our sins, he says that he is faithful and just to forgive us. Amen? So we constantly have to do that, and we have to hold on to his promises and walk forward not sit down and just cry about it and says, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Yes, we cannot do it. But if we walk with them, he says, take my yoke. I'm going to walk with you, never will I leave you or forsake you. He is there with us. It says, uh, two, we are not to give a place to sin. It's our responsibility. Romans 6, 11 to 13. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its lust. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead. Remember, from the dead, and your members as instruments of of righteousness to God. Three, live righteously. First John three, four through ten. Everyone
one who practices sin is also sin also practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous. Just as he is righteous, the one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The sons of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin, because his seed abides in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So, we need to practice righteousness. Not on our own strength. We need to surrender. We need to surrender to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I hear you. You're telling me what to do. And I have to bite my flesh and say, Flesh, stay down. Don't let it get up. Say, I know what I have to do. It's not easy. It hurts. I have to ask forgiveness. But if I listen to the Spirit, then I'm righteous. If I listen to the Spirit, it will bring growth. If I listen to the Spirit, I will bring forth fruit and begin to grow in the knowledge and wisdom of Christ. It's not going to happen no other way. Like I said, we want to just receive it. Lord, give me wisdom. Yes, the scripture says, ask for wisdom and he's going to give it to you. You know, but we make it sound so easy because with wisdom, it's going to come some trials after you go through all that, you're going to say like, oh, I have it now. I see it now. You know? Uh, and the last one, act as children of God. Ephesians 5, 1 through 5, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you. And it is proper among saints, and there must be no filthiness, any silly talk. You know, that I hear that a lot. Silly talking. You know? And we take it very lightly, but we need to catch ourselves and say, hey, we cannot be doing that. No force gesturing which are not fitting, but rather give, giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So brothers and sisters, where we were, now we have God's gift. We should rejoice and jump at things and, and always be grateful. Understand that we don't deserve it. But Lord, thank you for your mercy and your grace. But then we have a responsibility where we need to act as children of God. Because why? We are His witnesses. God is up there. He's on His throne. He is who He is. And He will always sit on His throne. But now He's saying, these are my children. And they're going to reflect me on earth. They're going to reach out. They're going to be the light, and they're going to bring forth, share the message, bridge the gap, building bridges, so that I can have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. He can do it without us, but remember, we are his body, and he's saying, mm -hmm. work with me. I'm going to use you. He can say, hey, 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 get out of the way, David. I got it. I don't need your help. But he's given me that privilege. Mm -hmm. It's like me with my daughter. There's a lot of things that I can do faster without her. But how is she going to learn? How is she going to imitate me? Now we need to imitate the Father. So that way, that's going to be our testimony. A lot of times we like to speak, but our actions are better than words. <clears throat> so we.
we had Moses and Gideon. Right? And we have Kung Fu Panda. Okay? We know the story of Moses and Gideon. They, they, they thought about themselves that they were small, that they could not, and they could not accept how God seen them. You know, God called them, you know, men of valor. And they're like, look at me. I'm hiding. I'm small. What do you mean? Okay? So they were chosen. Next. And uh, for final conclusion, brothers and sisters, when will we finally accept what God has done, what God has given? And when will we accept the way He sees us Amen. and say, Father, if you say it, it is done. Now you're going to walk me through it. You're not just pushing me. Yes, we feel like sometimes we're walking by ourselves. And yes, we cannot do it. But brothers and sisters, we're up here. We're sharing God's word. It's something that I never saw myself doing. You know, I remember in June, uh, elementary, junior high, high school, I was a shy boy. Here I'm in front of you. You know? Mm -hmm. But I can only do it with this help. Mm -hmm. If I try it on my own, you know, I'll be speaking my words. But you know, I'm not trying to speak my words. I'm just trying to just, uh, you know, reveal what the Lord is revealing through His Word to me. So, brothers and sisters, when will we wake up and finally accept and say, like Sister Rochelle says, I'm no longer going to trust in man. I'm no longer going to trust in David. I'm going to trust in God. And say, Lord, you died for me. Lord, this is how, this is your gift to me, your son, your precious son. Lord, I'm going to act the way you expect me to act. I'm going to act the way, the way you see me. So when are we going to finally say, rubber our eyes and say, I can see it, I can do it in Christ Jesus. And brothers and sisters, I hope you are blessed.
have a Bible study Friday at 7 p.m. if you guys want to join. And um, I need to talk to you afterwards about Sunday. So I guess we'll close. Sister Bell, you want to lead us in prayer as we close? Is that okay? And also, Sister Ellen will awesome worship. Yes. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Anybody uh, um, have not done a testimony? Everybody's done a testimony. Your brother uh, Mark did already. Dawn, man, we gotta pick on Dawn. Oh, wait, Mary. Sister Mary, you haven't done a testimony. No, not yet. We've been in trouble all the time. Testimonies, good, man. We need to hear. So I'm, I'm picking on testimonies. Um, and next week, next week we'll, um, we'll end class early too. But next week we'll pick the, um, the, the people for a set for the next two weeks from now. Anybody have not preached? I'm not going to ask people that are new preach just like you guys, if you guys, but if you guys have the unction to say a word of God, and uh, or I'll, you know what, uh, uh, testimony, testimony. But she hasn't preached yet. Hasn't preached yet. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> what does it look <laughs> I think the next week will be the. <laughs>